How you guys doing? It's Mario from Team Sparrow, and I just want to fill you in on what my projects are. I'm going to be doing a couple more uploads on videos, but I just want to tell you where I'm at for robotics right now for any of you guys that actually watch, and what kind of videos I'm going to be posting in case you want to tune in later if you're really interested. I've had a lot of people uh, comment to me on my Instagram of how they really enjoyed the combat robot and they want to see something uh, a next level of where they could compete at and actually do well in the competition so I'm going to be posting a video of my project that I'm doing right now for that some other people are stuck on designs for Vex and they're kind of asking me what do you think a good idea is what can we go with for this year so I'm gonna show you the summer bot that I took apart already but I still can show you sections of it and then I'm just gonna tell you what my plan is for robotics this year I am not doing VEX this year. My team has graduated and moved on to college, so I've decided that for right now, I am going to mentor VEX teams, help them out, tell them what I know, see if I could just help them out with the things that I really didn't understand until this past year. I am going to be on an FTC team called Unknown Element, and I'm going to be doing my Combat Robots League just because it's you build the robot and then every so couple of months you go to a competition but FTC is going to be pretty time consuming but I will still keep my Sparrow account that many of you follow and I'll still be there free to answer questions help you out give you my input on things because that part's not going to change so first I'll just show you guys my Vex robot for the game turning point I had the elements for this because, to my knowledge, until recently, I believed that I was going to be doing Vex. So, we can start with the drivetrain. As you guys know, parking bonuses is a big thing. And if you're able to do an autonomous or able to do it in endgame, you are going to be above a lot of the teams, especially at the early competitions. So, just to assure that I could easily get on there, the drive to start was on pillow bearings just so it was raised up just so that when you did go over the pole you had perfect clearance under here also in the past few years i've had the problem of always being really tight in the 18 by 18. this robot is 15 by 16 and for maneuverability it really works out it's definitely the way i would go right here i have my intake for the balls it's just attached to this motor. When I did have it, it was attached to here, and then from this side, it was chained up. And there was another one of these that leads it straight up to the intake to the flywheel. Okay. So, next to the flywheel. Up next is our flywheel. So here's our flywheel. At first I had a ratcheting system on there just to see how it would work, but then I took it off to try and uh, test around with rubber bands and really what the good grip was to actually launch a rubber band. And here we have, we have our gear ratio, we have the two gears on here. These are torque motors just because high speed did uh, burn out but it's still plenty fast. You could even try it with high-speed motors. But for me personally, I had your normal torque motors in here, all right? I saw a lot of teams uh, testing around with punchers, flywheels. I made a few versions of both just to kind of see what was good, what wasn't. I kind of did my own thing with like a custom slider type thing where it was in here and the puncher came back just to try and get rid of friction with some Lexan polycarbonate. It was all right, but I actually did in the end prefer the flywheel. We'll run some tests on everything afterwards. And then the lift that I did spend a lot of time perfecting, I wanted something that not many teams had. And this came down to just being really solid, really sturdy, and small. As you saw with the drivetrain, I wanted everything to be clear and compact. So here we have it. And it goes up. And there's no tilt side to side, no leaning. And it's just 
a sturdy two motor interior rubber band as you can see right in here and right in there and it's pretty weightless and it definitely gets the job done so now some tests okay to start off we're going to test our drivetrain here is our intake let's connect our controller And this is the old system, not the new V5. So there's that pretty simple. Here's our drivetrain. Just joystick. Pretty quick. High speed. And next, we will test the lift. Okay, so now our lift. And let's plug this in. Let's see. Okay. So I preferred my lift from last season on one joystick and the drive on the other. So here is the lift on the one joystick. And this, as you can see, is one motor plugged in, so that's pretty quick. Now let's say we plug in the second one. that's pretty quick with just itself um, that's torque so definitely switching to high speed could go way faster and now we will test out the flywheel I cannot find out where I put the ball so we are going to use a makeshift ball let's see what we have we're gonna use a little baseball So as you see, it picks up speed pretty fast. And overall, all these things together on the bot, pretty solid. Um, if I were to stay in Vex, I probably would stick with a flywheel and a six bar just for the first competition. Again, make sure I'm good at a little bit of everything. Make sure the programming's down. But as of right now, I still have my prototypes if people want to see pictures or anything like that. And still have probably two notebooks full of ideas. So feel free to DM me on Instagram at 355s underscore sparrow. And I'd love to send them to you. Just because as of right now I have no use for them but now I will show you the combat robot that I have coming along and I'll make another video of the electronics and everything else